Did you just give me 40 years? Sir? Yes. You just gave me 40 years. Well, guess what? Sir, just this In this episode, we delve into the world of bone-chilling and horrendous stories of child serial killers. Number 1. Anthony Kirkland The first horrifying story entails Kirkland, who perpetrated a string of terrible crimes between 2006 and 2009 that would plague the Cincinnati neighborhood for years to come. He preyed on girls and young ladies. Leola Douglas, a 27-year-old, was Kirkland's first his identified victim. They met on May 20th, 1987. He lured her to a remote location, sexually assaulted her and then murdered her. In February 2007, he attacked 14-year-old Cassonia Crawford and he set her on fire. He kidnapped and brutally killed Mary Jo Newton, age 45, in March 2009 after subjecting her to horrible acts of brutality. When Kirkland assaulted two additional victims in April 2009, his crimes took an especially terrible turn. He first went after Chelsea Johnson, 13, before assaulting and killing 25-year-old Kimya Rollinson, a mother of two. Kirkland sentenced to death on March 31, 2010. On August 28, 2018, a Hamilton County judge agreed with the jury's recommendation and sentenced Kirkland to death. He is on death row at the Chillicothe Correctional Institution. Number 2. Jeffrey Dahmer The Milwaukee Cannibal, or the Milwaukee Monster, also known as Jeffrey Dahmer, was a notorious American serial killer between the late 1980s and early 1990s. Jeffrey Dahmer, who was born on May 21, 1960 in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, exhibited evidence of abnormal behavior at a young age. He was known to have a disturbing childhood and a fixation with dissecting animals. His psychiatric problems deteriorated as he aged, and he developed cruel impulses. When Dharma was barely 18 years old in 1978, his murderous rampage started. Dharma enticed Stephen Hicks to his house as his first victim under the guise of wanting to share some booze. Dharma killed Hicks with a dumbbell after hearing him say he wanted to go and then tore his body to pieces. For the following 13 years, Dharma continued to prey on young boys, especially from underprivileged areas like homosexual bars and bus stations. His unusual method of operation consisted of sedating his victims, sexually assaulting and then killing them. He would then indulge in cannibalism, dismemberment and necrophilia in certain instances. His victims' ages ranged from 14 to 33, and their backgrounds were diverse. On November 28, 1994, while participating in a labor detail in the jail, Christopher Scarver, another prisoner, beat Dharma to death with a metal bar. Later, Scarver said that he chose Dharma as his target because of his heinous deeds and callous demeanor. Number 3. John Wayne Gacy Brace yourselves as we talk about this American serial murderer John Wayne Gacy, sometimes referred to as the Murderer Clown. John Wayne Gacy, who was born on March 17, 1948 in Chicago, Illinois, presented as a respectable citizen. Gacy committed crimes by enticing adolescents and men to his house under false pretenses, sometimes by promising them money or job possibilities. Once inside his home, Gacy would employ different methods to render his victims unconscious, such as chloroform or handcuffs. Then he would torment and sexually attack them before killing them by hanging. 33 people are thought to have been killed by Gacy, and the majority of them were buried beneath his land. Gacy used a morbid technique to get rid of the remains, either by throwing them in the neighboring rivers or dumping them in a crawl area under his house. A worrying degree of manipulation and control is shown by the fact that some victims were found mutilated and others were discovered wearing Gacy's attire. Gacy's execution by lethal injection at the Statesville Correctional Center in Crest Hill, Illinois on May 10, 1994, brought his fate to a close. Number 4. Ted Bundy 
the charming and clever Ted Bundy, who was born on November 24, 1946 in Burlington, Vermont, utilized his charm and cunningness to carry out a string of horrific killings in the 1970s. It has been estimated that his killings range from 30 to over 100 people, while the precise number of his victims is still unclear. As part of his strategy, Bundy would approach young women, frequently pretending to be hurt or in need of help, and then kidnap them. Later, he would kill his victims and sexually attack them, frequently indulging in necrophilia and acts of severe brutality. He carries out these vicious crimes in different states, Washington, Utah, and Florida, etc. During his killing spree time, notable victims included Susan Elaine Ran Court, Donna Gail Manson, and Linda Ann Healy. He attacked and killed Nancy Wilcox in 1974, then went after Melissa Ann Smith, 17, whom he savagely killed and sexually abused. In the end, Bundy's destiny was decided. On January 24, 1989, he was put to death in the electric chair at Florida State Prison. Number 5. Albert Fish American serial murderer and child molester Albert Fish, sometimes known as the Grey Man or the Werewolf of Wisteria, was responsible for a number of horrific murders in the early 20th century. Fish committed crimes against young children, especially those who were weak and underprivileged. He would pretend to give them jobs or other incentives to get them to remote spots like deserted buildings or remote areas in order to draw them there. When Fish got his prey all to himself, he would torture them to horrific acts of cruelty and sadism. He admitted to a number of horrifying acts, including the 1928 kidnapping and murder of Grace Bud. Fish detailed the kidnapping, killing and devouring of Grace in a letter to the family in 1934. Fish described the suffering he caused Grace in gruesome detail in the letter. He detailed tying her wrists and feet, stripping her naked and then starting his horrific deeds. When Fish admitted to killing Grace and eating some of her body, the letter took an even more unsettling turn. He explained how he dismembered her and cooked her flesh. Grace's mother immediately notified the police after receiving the letter, which resulted in Fisher's ultimate arrest. On January 16, 1936, he was put to death in the electric chair at the Sing Sing Correctional Facility in Ossining, New York. Number 6. Louis Alfredo Garavito the Colombian serial murderer Louis Alfredo Garavito, popularly known as La Bestia or The Beast, is regarded as one of the most horrible in history. Numerous young boys were kidnapped, tortured, sexually assaulted and killed as a result of Garavito's actions. Between 1992 and 1999, Garavito targeted youngsters who were weak and poor, frequently on the streets or in underprivileged neighborhoods. He would approach people and win their trust by making offers of money, gifts or jobs before enticing them to remote locations. Garavito frequently used lengthy torture techniques such as beatings, sexual assault and mutilation. Garavito's victims' exact toll is still unclear, however it's assumed that there were between 138 and 172 young boys who were killed. Bodies were found in numerous places around Colombia. Garavito was given a lesser sentence under Colombian law in return for his cooperation and knowledge of the whereabouts of his victims' bodies. As a result, he received the maximum prison term permitted under Colombian law, 1,853 years. Number 7. Dennis Nilsson The Muswell Hill murderer, also known as Dennis Nilsson, was a British serial murderer who carried out a number of terrifying murders in the late 1970s and early 1980s. At least 12 young men in London were killed and dismembered as a result of his acts. He particularly targeted homeless or marginalized young boys who were in need of protection. Nilton would entice them to his home by offering them food, shelter or company. He would then perform sexual actions with his victims there before drowning or strangling them. When a plumber found human remains clogging Nilton's home sewers in 1983, the entire scope of Nilton's crimes was revealed. After being called, the police searched the area and found the horrifying remnants of Nilsson's atrocities. Dennis Nilsson was given a life sentence with a suggestion that he serve at least 25 years in jail. Number 8. Javed Iqbal The Butcher of Lahore, also known as Javed Iqbal, was a Pakistani serial murderer who carried out a string of horrible atrocities in the late 1990s. His crimes included kidnapping, torturing and killing teenage boys in Pakistan's Lahore. Iqbal preyed on defenseless young boys from disadvantaged homes in 1998 and 1999. Before exposing them to unspeakable acts of brutality and cruelty, 
He seduced them with promises of cash, food and presents. Iqbal used torture, strangling and sexual abuse as his tactics. Iqbal destroyed the evidence by dismembering his victims' bodies and dissolving them in acid after the murders. He wrote letters outlining his actions and stating his wish to draw attention to the condition of street kids to the police and different media sources. Iqbal admitted in his writings to kidnappings, torturing and killing more than 100 children. Javed Iqbal was found guilty of many charges of murder and sexual assault in 2000. He received a death sentence, and in October 2001, his body was discovered in his cell. Although suicide was listed as the official cause of death, there have been questions and conjecture about the details of his passing. Number 9. Robert Black During the 1980s and the beginning of the 1990s, Robert Black, a notorious Scottish serial killer, preyed on young children. Black predominantly targeted young girls for kidnapping, sexual abuse and murder. He preyed on children between the ages of 5 and 11, and one of his favorite tactics was to get them into his vehicle. Then, after transporting them to a remote location, he would carry out his heinous acts and dispose of the victims' bodies. In 1981, the abduction and murder of Jennifer Cardy, a nine-year-old child in County Antrim, Northern Ireland, is one of his most well-known crimes. For many years, the case remained unresolved because Black eluded arrest. The kidnapping and death of another young girl, 11-year-old Susan Maxwell, in the Scottish borders, however, led to his eventual capture in 1990. In a dramatic turn of events, Robert Black eventually confessed to kidnapping and killing Jeanette Tate, 13, in 2011, while serving his prison term in HMP Magabury in Northern Ireland. Before Black's confession, Jeanette's disappearance had been a mystery for more than 30 years. Robert Black passed away in jail in January 2016. Number 10. Ian Brady and Myra Hindley In the 1960s, a legendary couple known as Ian Brady and Myra Hindley stunned the UK with a string of horrible atrocities. Brady and Hindley largely committed their murders in and around Manchester, including the notorious Moores murders case. The pair enticed the victims, who ranged in age from 10 to 17, and took them to isolated locales, including Saddleworth Moor, where they endured unspeakable anguish before being brutally killed. Brady and Hindley's actions were not completely understood until 1965, when Hindley's brother-in-law, David Smith, saw Brady and Hindley kill a 17-year-old boy named Edward Evans. Smith called the police, which resulted in Brady's arrest and the subsequent finding of evidence against him, including pictures and audio tapes of their victims. Brady and Hindley were both convicted of several counts of murder in the subsequent trial. Brady was found guilty of the murders of Edward Evans, Leslie Ann Downey and John Kilbride, while Hindley was judged responsible for the deaths of Leslie Ann Downey, Edward Evans and for aiding and abetting John Kilbride's murder. Brady was sentenced to jail after being found guilty and he spent the remainder of his life there. Myra Hindley was initially given a life sentence with a minimum of 30 years in jail.